Uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, we hope you are okay wherever you are. We are doing a short video here. Uh, you will recall that at some point we did an interview, a discussion with the Comrade Butelez when you had to run a training for caregivers in downtown Johannesburg. But there are developments that uh, they are doing. We are also joined by Comrade Velenbin in Jov. He's going to introduce himself and the work that uh, he does. Uh, Comrade Velenbin, we hear you are in Johannesburg. You are opening an advice office. What is happening? Yeah, uh, greetings to you and your viewers. My name is Velempin Indlovu. Uh, I'm a legal practitioner and I'll be working with Comrade Vuteleze Nyati in the African Development Consortium. Then what, what we're now doing, we're going to be opening a paralegal clinic, which will be an advice and referral center. And some of the things that are going to be done there will going to be giving legal and immigration advice to people who are having any problems when it comes to any immigration issue. And then the other issues that will, the center will have are these which are listed here, the general advisory services, professional counseling, the legal and immigration advisory, like I've said before, and then voluntary rep repatriation and migrant projects. For those who want to say, who are saying that at the end of this uh, year, they're going to leave and go back home. And then we also do prison and hospital follow-ups. If there are any people, for whatever reason, who find themselves in prison or in hospital, we'll do follow-ups with them. And then we are going to have linkages with other service providers in this space of ours. And then Obviously, you've talked about uh, the training of caregivers and also entrepreneurship and business, and as well as clinic services. So those are the things that we're going to be doing, but I'm mainly going to be based on the legal and migration advisory center. We, we, we are told, uh, Comrade uh, VP Velempini, that uh, there are quite a number of migrants in prisons who are not receiving fair legal advice. Some of them have been on trial for the last five years. What is going to be your intervention to assist those migrants that have been there for five years in different prisons in South Africa without going to trial? Uh, if, if someone is in prison, and they have not, has not gone to trial for five years, that is actually a violation of their rights. Mm -hmm. And then, so in following up, we're going to make sure that people enforce their rights because the ignorance is what is killing right. our people. So people think that just because you're an undocumented migrant, you don't have any rights. The South African constitution gives everyone rights. If you are arrested as, an illegal, as, as, as anyone, the courts, the law says that you've got to go to court within 48 hours. And then there, if you, you, you apply for bail, I understand that at times if you're a, an undocumented migrant, you might have challenges in getting bail, but that does not mean that your trial should not go ahead. Your trial should go ahead and then you are sentenced if you are found guilty. If you're not found guilty, you're supposed to be released and then you are obviously supposed to be deported, but that does not cancel any right that you have. Mm -hmm. You're only supposed to be tried for the crime that you have, because some people have been on trial for five years and they are not given bail. Mm -hmm. That person, you will find that when they are sentenced, they will be given time of time saved. And if you are sentenced for, five, for, for three years, it means that you've actually wasted two years in prison sitting there for nothing. So we're going to be doing those prison follow-ups. We, we, we have been uh, contacted by some in prison who say uh, they've completed their sentence and uh, they are having challenges of them being deported. I remember we were conducted by a, a, a lady in Bulawayo saying her son has completed a prison term in the South African prison, but uh, there are challenges in deporting him back to Zimbabwe because there are delays. Are you going to be intervening in such cases where if a Zimbabwean or any migrant completes their prison term, then they are deported? 
Yes, yes, well, we're going to be doing exactly that because where, where there's a loophole there is that there are different government departments involved. So the correctional services department is the one that handles prisons, whereas the one that handles uh, the deportation is the home affairs. So if there's no communication between the corrections department and the home affairs, a person will sit there in prison after they've completed their term. Because what will happen is correction services will say oh, they, are, they are waiting for home affairs to come and, and clear that person. Because if you're arrested, as anyone who's arrested, when you're about to be released, if you're not a South African, the home affairs should check your, your the status, what status you have. Even if you have a permit, home affairs has to check that permit if it's a valid permit. So you, we all know that home affairs is usually says that they've got a backlog of many cases. So it might you might find that it's a case of correctional services referring the matter to home affairs and home affairs taking a long time to come and attend to that matter. So it will be, will be the breach between the correctional services and the home affairs people to make sure that if you've served your sentence, you are released as early as possible. Before we get to Comrade Nyati to talk about the hospitals, we see Operation Tudula is camping in hospitals. But before we get into that, uh, you have said that you will also assist those that the that EP holders who are not able to move to other visas who might want to uh, go back. What kind of assistance will you be given to them? The kind of assistance is this one here, yeah, which is uh, voluntary repatriation. And then for so someone who's volunteering to go home, they will have to do some project that they want to do at home. It, it will depend entirely on them. Each case is going to be treated differently. There's, there's not one size fits all. So it depends on the skills that that person has actually gained while you still are here. Mm -hmm. It will be better for you, to, if you're a mechanic here, it will be better for you when you go back home to be involved in a, a project which is just like that, because there are cars back home. So you will be a mechanic here, then you'll go back home and do a project. Then if you're a farmer here, you can go back home and do farming that side. And then, so, so it, it will all depend. We'll deal with this issue on a case by case basis. We won't have one size fits all solution. Okay, uh, Comrade Nyati, we see Operation Dudula, they are stopping people from accessing health institutions. As a nurse yourself by uh, training, what does this mean? What's the position? What's the position? Yeah, I, I think, thank you very much, Mapena, for having us again. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I think we are at a very uh, um, uh, crucial and <clears throat> agent stage whereby we really need to tackle issues uh, simultaneously. That is why, uh, as uh, an organization which is uh, powering uh, the African Development Consortium, we've decided to open the advising referral office where we have got four pillars. Uh, the first pillar is the one that Pundlo was talking about just now, <clears throat> talking about the paralegal clinic that is going to tackle a lot of issues that relate to uh, issues of, of rights and constitution. Uh, protecting people's uh, uh, well-being and so forth. So what the question that you have just asked me, it relates to people's rights. Mm. It relates to access to health care. Mm. Uh, the constitution uh, of South Africa, the constitution of uh, other countries, and also the United Nations uh, has got a list of rights mm. that are summed up in what we call the client's right charter. Mm. So. Uh, one of them is accessing health care. Okay. So as it stands right now, I see that the interruption in accessing that health care by some people that have got um, certain issues that they are raising. Um, so they might be raising those issues uh, in, a, in a way that actually infringes on other people's rights. Because I assume that some of the people that are actually being blocked, they, they are legally in South Africa. Uh, I think their main concern is that the resources are being depleted. depleted um, the migrant, they've got a feeling, actually, that that's what they've been saying to us. That, uh, and we, we, we also saw it when the uh, MEC of Limpopo spoke about how the, the, the resources of 
of the Department of Health are being, um, you know, used for for migrants. Maybe to try. And what are the other three pillars that uh, you? Uh, because you spoke about one pillar, saying there are four pillars that you'd be focusing on. What are the other three pillars? Yes, the first pillar is the paralegal clinic that is going to be manned by Mr. Ndrovu. The mm. second pillar is uh, one of uh, psychosocial support. Mm -hmm. uh, if you check the issue that you're talking about with Ndrovu right now of mm. following people uh, at, um, who are imprisoned, uh, mm -hmm. people that are hospitalized, that, that's, that is a psychosocial intervention from our side. Mm -hmm. We have got counselors that are staged uh, that will be coming uh, um, to attend to people at our offices of course people will have to book uh, to be attended to by our counselors those that cannot come to our offices we have got a telephonic uh, psychosocial support facility where we will be calling those people and hearing their issues as we said that we are going to be dealing with people on a case uh, by case basis mm -hmm. the other pillar is one of voluntary repatriation we realize, uh, Comrade Mapena, that uh, uh, you know denial does not help. Mina is a health practitioner. I know that denial actually kills. If you are infected with HIV and you are denying that you are infected uh, with HIV, you will develop AIDS. You will be develop what we call opportunistic infections like TB, meningitis, and you might die because you are suffering from denial. The sooner you accept your situation, even psychology and sociology will tell you that, that the sooner you accept your situation, the better. You start to move to the next stage, which is called the coping stage, where you start to find alternatives. So I, we are saying to the people, the sooner they accept that they might not be able to migrate from the, 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 the current permit, which is the ZTP, or to remain illegal, the better because they will start to explore the other option. So the, 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 the third pillar is that of voluntary repatriation and we are encouraging people to explore that route. Come talk to us, come talk to Mr. Jovu. There are so many issues around that. For instance, people are saying, how do we repatriate our properties? How do we repatriate our benefits? People are going to uh, be resigning from work. They will be having benefits like your UIF, your pensions and so forth, because people have been working using these permits for years. So we are saying, come, let's sit together and talk about those issues than to wait for December and, and then you start to panic. The last pillar is the one of sustainable projects. We are saying, we have touched on it to say that if a person is a mechanic in South Africa, we are encouraging them to find some activities that they can actually move back to their countries of origin with. Just maybe just to continue them, Comrade Maben. Uh, this issue of um, sustainable projects is attached to what we call developmental uh, projects. Let me give you an example. I, I'm a training practitioner, as people know, that I run a, a training college. Mm -hmm. One of the approaches of actually acquiring a certificate is that a person does not necessarily have to go back to school. Mm -hmm. We we mm -hmm. as development or ETD practitioners or education training and development practitioners, mm -hmm. we can use an approach that is called RPL, which stands for recognition of prior learning. Mm -hmm. So we can go to a person and say, you have got experience of working in a farm, mm -hmm. and your experience mm -hmm. uh, has been you know has exposed you to so many things uh, regarding farming. So we check whether the person is competent in certain areas and we award them a certificate based on that. There are many people that left their countries without any formal qualification. They are here, they worked in one area for a very long time. They qualify to be RPL so that they go back to their countries okay. with a certificate. Okay, yes. uh, 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 Comrade Nyati, those who want to visit the advice and the referral center, how do they go about it? Where are your offices? How do they contact you? Uh, how do they get physically to your offices? We are situated uh, in the CBD of Johannesburg, not very far from MTN tax rank for conveniency for, for people who are coming from different areas. Uh, MTN tax rank is a central place. So we are at number 112, Kirk Street. 
intersection Kirk and Moy. Number one, one, two, Kirk Street, intersection Kirk and Moy. You are also reachable on WhatsApp, and my number is 060 311 9086. I'm going to repeat it, Comrade Mapena. Mm -hmm. uh, WhatsApp number, and I prefer WhatsApp because I also uh, teach in class. So sometimes people try to call me and I won't be able to answer the phone. So mm -hmm. I prefer WhatsApp. Uh, mm -hmm. The number again is 060 311 9086. Our landline is 010 023 0518. 010 mm -hmm. 023. 0518. We are starting tomorrow, Comrade Maben. Okay. Uh, we are starting tomorrow with the band. First, first of September. First of September, we have got, we are giving ourselves this three month, uh, three, four month, uh, 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 September, October, November, December. And we are saying to people, uh, it is important for people to be organized. Mm -hmm. We left our countries unorganized. <clears throat> we cannot remain unorganized. It is important for people to, to be organized. We are building a database of businesses. We are building a database of individuals to understand the skills of people, to understand the area where people are, to understand uh, any other things about what people have been doing all these years. Okay. Uh, this database is going to help us in the long term. Okay. Uh, uh, Comrade Njov, are you going to be training other paralegals? Because I know there are a lot of people that uh, might want to undergo that training. Are you going to be providing that uh, facility? Uh, no, I will not be training other paralegals, but I can refer them to where they can be trained. But okay. if there are people who are interested in maybe coming and interning at the center, and they, are, they already have legal qualifications because law is one of those fields where there are many people who've already got qualifications, but maybe they're not working. So we, we can welcome those, but we don't have the accreditation to train any, anyone to be a paralegal. Okay, in respect to CCMA, what was the situation? Are you able to represent workers that are of migrant origin and that have challenges? Yes, we are able to assist anyone because we can assist you go to, go to the CCMA. Even when you are having internal hearings and you need legal advice, you're also welcome to, to come to us and say, I've been given this chat sheet I don't understand it, what are my legal rights? So anything to do with any, any, any legal rights, to anything to do with law mm -hmm. of any kind, whether it's labor law, whether it's migration, whatever, you are free to come and say, okay, Mabena referred me to you here. I'm coming from Mabena, so can, can you please advise me on this issue? Okay. And then we'll advise you. Because a lot of people go to CCMA, when they're dismissed, they, they go straight to CCMA without getting any legal advice. And when they get there, they don't even know the processes. Some don't even know what happens there. Some don't even know where the CCMA is when it's right here by Gandhispo. So my, we'll be helping okay. people. My, my understanding is that uh, this advice and referral center is not for Zimbabwean migrants, but for every migrant in South Africa. Is that the correct understanding? Yes, it's the correct understanding. It's for every migrant. And it's not limited to migrants only. Even mm. South Africans are free to come because we cannot be operating in South Africa and be discriminating against South Africans. Mm. Right. Mm. So if there are South Africans who need legal advice, they are also free to come to the same. Okay. Okay. No, uh, uh, thank you so much, comrades. Uh, we will indeed uh, 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 talk more uh, 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 in a few weeks' time. Uh, but uh, we, we know that you have said that the 1st of September, anyone who wants to visit your offices should do so by WhatsApping 060311908 or call the landline 010023 0518. 
and the offices are number 112 Kerk Street, that is uh, with Moy. Uh, what's the name of the building, Comrade Nyati? It's Josie Housing, Comrade Mabena. Um, so we are on the fifth floor, Josie Housing, number 112 Kerk Street. So we are looking forward to having people coming through because this is very, very, very agent, Comrade Mabena. Okay. We feel that it will remain unorganized for a very long time. The, uh, 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 thank you so much. And our appeal is that anyone watching this whether you are a migrant, you are a South African, you have heard your, you have heard yourself. Please share in the comment sections. You might want to ask the questions. We will indeed forward uh, the questions that uh, you have to the two comrades, comrades Njovu and comrade uh, 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 yeah, there are uh, 39 uh, markets. Uh, if you know, you know. So, no, thank you so much. Please uh, share this uh, uh, video to your contacts so that this discussion reaches a lot of people and they kindly subscribe to this YouTube channel. Otherwise, thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you, comrades. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.